Thanks for staying with us. Now, as the dates for the elections approach in a matter of weeks, the Chief Election Commissioner today warned that Tamil Nadu has a worse track record of money power than most states. In an exclusive interview to NDTV's Srinivasan Jain, Dr. S.Y. Qureshi said that they had to transfer top officials because of evidence of partisan behaviour. He said the state was no exception. That there is an excessive control of the state machinery by the DMK government. You recently just transferred the DGP. Is that an indication that you believe that there is the possibility of that kind of abuse? Yes. Well, in this case, it, uh, there was more than perception. There, uh, there was evidence also of the past, including a court judgment. That they, which suggested partisanship. Which, which, uh, yeah, exactly. Which is why uh, I think you've transferred a number of fairly senior police officers. I think the DG, of course, has been transferred, but also the ADGP and, and, and yes, a few and others. Some SPs, some DMs. That uh, we uh, almost uh, 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 routinely we do the, to ensure that bureaucracy so, behaves. So before we move on uh, away from Tamil Nadu into the wider canvas of what is happening with elections and, and corruption and black money, I just want to ask you about Tamil Nadu and DMK because as you were saying, you have a number of these seizures which suggest that crores of rupees are being circulated. You have also got an example as you pointed out of partisanship. Is the evidence pointing towards the fact that in Tamil Nadu, the DMK, the state government is uh, perhaps unduly using uh, both state machinery and also money power more than the other parties. Is, there, is, is that what broadly what, what the trends are pointing towards right now? Well, actually, the, it is the, the tendency of every, the, every government, every ruling party to try and misuse to the extent they can. Is that what is happening in Tamil Nadu, you think? Well, it will, it, it will not be allowed to happen because of the very idea that we have uh, made these changes. Yes. That is the purpose. We want to send down the signal that it's not acceptable. And anything, so suppose they make an announcement which is not acceptable to us, we stop immediately. So, uh, so you are keeping a, a particularly yes, strict eye? Yes, that is uh, to ensure level playing field. Yes. Otherwise, government has unlimited resources. So they, they can use to their advantage. We don't allow that. The rivalry between the two main political parties in the scenario, caustic at the best of times, is getting louder and fiercer now that the elections are barely three weeks away. A not-too-impressed son of Karunanidhi has spewed fire at his rivals. MK Arigiri uh, has said that the opposition's alliance in the state is on a ventilator which may be taken off on the polling date. <laughs> Now, in view of uh, the preparations for the mighty polls in the next few weeks, the Corporation Commissioner, along with the election observers for the polls ahead, convened a meeting with flying squads and concerned poll officials at the corporation office today. So as to ensure a safe, free and fair polls this April, four flying squads have been engaged in duty. These appointed personnel who will scan 16 constituencies within the city will be accompanied by four other officials. We have, a, we have established a um, hierarchical setup. There are 23 um, flying squads that are functioning in the city now. So whenever we get a complaint, immediately the flying squad is told to rush to the scene of crime and then take swift action. So within 5 or 10 minutes, the squads reach the place of occurrence and then take action. Now, while the election commission has been encouraging more people to come forward and exercise their franchise, one among uh, the introductions, in fact, this year is also a separate queue for elderly people at the different centres. We are making elaborate arrangements for uh, smooth conduct of the poll. Uh, if, uh, I mean, there are thinking in the Commission, even uh, we have been told to uh, work on the idea of forming a third queue. Normally, if it's an all-water booth, there will be a queue for men and women separately. But this time, there is a thinking that we can even form a third queue for the elderly, irrespective of sex, they can uh, be there.
probably you know people of 60 or 65 plus can form a separate queue and then they may be allowed to vote on priority basis such thinking is going on Meanwhile, the hard bargaining done by both the big and the small parties is not the only riveting element in elections 2011. The bigger picture is the first sign that the Queen Bee is showing a willingness to compromise and accommodate allies, something she has not been credited with so far. Are we seeing a new Jailalita now? She is not known to write to people that she is hurt, something she did when Vaiko decided to sit up the elections after failing to secure the berths he wanted. Jailalita said, and I quote, I have always had goodwill and affection for Vaiko. I am hurt by Vaiko's decision to boycott elections. I have always treated Vaiko like my brother. After all, Amma is known to set conditions, not bow down to them. Yet, when the left parties, unhappy with the AIADMK's original list of 160 seats, spoke about forming a third front, she postponed her election campaign at once and personally oversaw hour-long discussions which stretched into the night and arrived at a compromise. Over the past few years, many of her trusted colleagues in the AIADMK have called it quits. Some have even blamed her for her alleged self-centered nature. Call it self-introspection or a brilliant political move or both. Jayalalitha knows this is a do-or-die election for her. In Chennai, Bama Ravi, NDTV Hindu. When we come back on the news tonight, the robo's golden heart leads for Japan's men and women. It might not be too late before the superstar flies down to offer help.